one tournament and give up everything else, it would definitely be Wimbledon. It's my favourite time of year, it's my favourite tournament. I just look forward to everything about it. I know that it's going to be my toughest test so far. Whatever the situations you're in, you've got to deal with them. To see on TV the reaction on Henman Hill is pretty amazing. Before there was Andy Murray, Britain's hopes of a first Wimbledon men's singles champion since 1936 rested on the shoulders of Tim Henman. He's done it! For two weeks every July, Tim took the British public on a true roller coaster of emotions. Tea turned cold, phones were left off the hook, and dinners went uncooked. The nation's love affair with Tiger Tim began in dramatic fashion in 1996, up against the reigning French Open champion Yevgeny Kofelnikov. Henman saved two match points. An almighty upset was brewing. The scenes were a far cry from 12 months previously, when Henman was disqualified from the championships. That incident was a distant memory as he clawed his way back against Kofelnikov. By now, Hen Mania had well and truly set in. In 1997, hopes were high. Rain forced play onto a rare middle Sunday, but the wet weather certainly didn't dampen British spirits. Centre Court echoed to chant more Wembley than Wimbledon, but who cared? Tim Henman needed all the help he could get. I can safely say it doesn't get any better than what I played in front of today because point after point they pick me up. A country stood still, united. Match point, Henman. Just the whole atmosphere was amazing, and I don't think in tennis for a British player to play on centre court at Wimbledon with that sort of atmosphere, I know it can't get any better. Great Britain was again captivated in 1998. All eyes were on Henman as he became the first British man to reach the single semi finals at the Championships since 1973. I've always regarded it as the biggest thing in the world. If I could choose to play my best tennis, it'd definitely be for those two weeks. He's the best grass court player in, in the world at, at the moment and the way he's come through his five matches has been pretty effortless. Having said that, with the way I'm playing, I definitely feel I've got a good chance. He seems to have found a hole with a new shot. It's just terrific, this. Unbelievably, Sampras stretching. The backhand volley is a winner from Pete Sampras. And both players really have hit the heights. Thank you. Players are ready, please. Thank you. What a winner. Twelve months on, deja vu.
different year, same result. Tim, how hard is that to take? On the day I lost to the better player, I think it was as simple as that. It was 2001 before Henman would return to the last four, thanks to impressive wins over Todd Martin and one Roger Federer. Taking on wildcard Goran Ivanisevic with the hill, Henman Hill to many, mesmerised, and Britain's glued to TV sets, we were treated to an all-time Wimbledon classic, stretching over three epic days. I certainly did my best. Unfortunately, it wasn't good enough this year. A tale of so near yet so far. Valiant in effort and determined more than ever, Tim's inimitable resolve would help him bounce back again the following year. Like every July, hope hung in the air that this could be Tim's year. Another run to the semi-finals. In his way this time, world number one, Leighton Hewitt. Flirtation with the latter stages would continue for Henman, but retirement eventually would beckon. In 2007, Britain's pillar of hope for so long would be victorious for the final time on centre court. It was his 43rd win at Wimbledon, and sadly, his last. Bowing out in the next round, Tim's pursuit of glory was over. His legacy was his inspiration to others with one fan in particular following in his footsteps and making a country's Wimbledon dream a reality. For a generation of British sporting fans, Summers and Henmania went hand in hand with moments to last a lifetime. Three steps to one, seven, two, three.